Hi, and welcome to the Jen and Margie Show. I'm Margie Wigan. And I'm and Jen Belisi. And we're here to have a community conversation. So we hope you'll call in while we're talking and join us. You can either call us at 508-435-7880, or you can email us at live at hcam.tv and give us your thoughts, ask some questions. We're really excited to be here with our first guest, Dennis Cates. Howdy, folks. Of Hopkinton Drug. He's going to talk a little bit about some health trends that he sees currently happening in our world. So I was going to say, we were talking just before we got on, and we were going to say, how did you start in doing this? Like, what was it your father's pharmacy, I think I've heard yeah. a story? so oh. my, my, my dad started the uh, Hopkinton Drug in 1954. I was cool. one years old, I believe. Um, this is what I know. This is what I do. Uh, this is part of who I am. Yeah. Uh, Hopkinton Drug is what I've been doing all my life. Um, thought I like it. It's fun. It's interesting. It's not every day is wonderful, but most of the time it's pretty wonderful. Well, you can't have an A-day every day. No, you can't. Sometimes it's just not <laughs> about just, that. You gotta have Sometimes it's sour lemons. Yeah. you got to <laughs> have a few B's to appreciate the A's, I guess. You do. You do. So, uh, in any case, uh, my father did participate, do that very, 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 very rarely. Uh, and it was a fellow from... Um, that I met at a uh, continuing education seminar. Uh, his name was um, George Wrench. He was from Keene, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Is He's, that wrench like the tool wrench? Uh, I think it's uh, R-E-N-C-H. Okay. And um, he's since passed on. Oh. Um, but uh, we got a chance to talk and, you know, he kind of evaluated. He thought I would be pretty good at what I was at, at compounding and he encouraged me and uh, he mentored me and uh, I'm still using some of his techniques to this day. I mean, cool. He was a really brilliant man. He really was. So, so can, I remember, I was just going to say, sorry, Margie. I was going to say, uh, years ago, I remember going on a tour with one of your pharmacists when you were building your whole compounding center and, and the sterility of it and the, the magnitude of the, the technology in there was pretty incredible. Wow. Um, so I, I, I know that people use you from all over the country. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. So we're kind of well known in the um, Sears community. That stands for Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome Community. That is usually, uh, basically it can be any autoimmune disease. Interesting, uh, okay. But primarily we're focusing on mold and yeast. Okay. In um, in Lyme disease. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and they're terribly, terribly uh, uh, related uh, because sometimes some of the infections or the problems that you can have in Lyme disease can also occur in mold. Many patients have mold and Lyme disease at the same time, which really makes it terribly difficult for them and can be very expensive. Uh, and especially the remediation if it's a lie, if it's mold. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. talking about environmental mold in, in a home, in a workplace, um, something that would affect yeah. somebody's so, ability to fight that off. Can I back up just one sec? Sure. What I was going to ask was, what was it that Dr. Wrench or Mr. Wrench saw in you that made him think that you would be excellent at compounding? Just curious. Just, you do have a very inquisitive mind. You want to know why things work. He, I, I really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. don't know what he's so saying. And we, and we can't ask him. <laughs> I just can't. Wait, wait, wait. Hello. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Um, so, he, so, cause you, so he didn't say to you, I noticed that you are very interested in this, and I think you'd be good at compounding. Or I noticed that you have an ability at remembering scientific compounds or the periodic table. or. I think I just most probably just questioned him and saw different ways of doing the same thing that he was doing. That's what uh, I was wondering. You know, wondering. for example, um, um, one of the things that we try and do is we try and get the air out of creams because this, you know, we've all done it. We, we've taken a tube of toothpaste and we squeeze it out and this is air bubble and it pops and, you know, you're not getting the toothpaste on mm. the tube and it's not getting what you wanted. Um, how do you get the air out? Interesting. So... So, coming up with the centrifuge type of system. So it's not just, wow. it's so it's not just Tylenol and Advil. Yeah, it's like being an pharmacy. inventor. You're yeah. an inventor. Yeah, you, you got to find a way that to achieve amazing. the goal and right. make it right. consumer friendly. And yeah. people want to make sure that people want to know that they're getting what they paid for. Let's Thank go, you. Let's go back to the Lyme yeah. disease no, for fine. a second again. Or mold. I think yeah, or mold, um, and think about the if anybody has, has had Lyme or mold and has has either been a uh, a patron of Hopkinton Pharmacy or not, but simply you know give us your experience and your 
um, your knowledge of what you've been through and share it with everybody, that would be wonderful. But what have you seen from uh, a perspective of, of a pharmaceutical approach and a non-pharmaceutical approach with Lyme disease that you think you know would be helpful for people out there to hear? I know some people, the neurologic effects of Lyme disease sometimes can be very intense. And so what, do you, what, do you, what would be your words of advice for people with well, Lyme? If you think, so first of all, if you're going to go out into the woods, um, you got to check yourself when you come in. It's just that simple. You know, my wife has a, has a, has a has a rule. Basically, I got to leave. If I've been out in the woods, I got to leave my clothes at the door. And <laughs> it basically, you know, leave them there, throw them in the wash. She's going to check me to make sure that I don't yeah. have ticks on me. It's just I that a, simple. There was a kid at camp today who said that her mm -hmm. mother makes her put her clothes in the laundry and then she goes over the child with a roller. Because I've heard that if you use one of those clothing rollers, it picks up the, oh, the ticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she goes over her daughter's hair and her clothes mm -hmm. with a roller to make sure there's nothing on her. Yeah. So preventive, you know, preventive. just yeah. preventive. Check, check yourself out. Yeah. Say you've gotten now, you've got a tick bite, Lyme disease is... Okay. So first of all, 70% 70, 70 of all Lyme bites do not result in a bullseye. Love that. Okay. And why is that? Tell, if you could tell. I it. don't remember. I don't remember okay. that. I don't remember this. Uh, there is a reason, but I don't. I don't know that. So do, if they have no bullseye, does that mean no Lyme no. or just right? That's no, what. It does that's not what's mean important. That. And so then the next problem is is that there's a uh, there's a test. Um, mm -hmm. It's called a Western blot test, mm -hmm. and the Western blot test is poor to say the least. Right. It's, really, it's a blood test. It's a blood test, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a terrible test. It's really not very good. And, and I mean, um, if I was the testing company, I wouldn't like me saying something like that. Right. But th there are false so many different and false negatives. And th but there's, do there's, there's dozens of infections that can be delivered in Western blots only measuring one. Right. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. just a very it's a it's a sensitive test, but it's not specific. So it's not specific well, enough, or, or not, not broad enough, I should right. say, to recognize all the various components of. Right, because right. there's babiosis and there's there's a whole how many five that we've identified. Oh, I think there's over two hundred. So it's not just Lyme that's the problem from a tick. Yeah. And the other problem that is uh, that we're starting to discover, which is you know kind of concerning, um, which will bring me to sp frequency specific microcurrent back back then because I'm still trying to find out how to solve this problem. We do have a, a, a phone call for is that person on the line right now? Oh, well great. that would be great. Caller, are okay. you there? I'm here. Uh, my name is Michael. Thank you for having me. Hi, Hi Michael. Michael. Hi, Mike. Thanks for calling. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for, uh, like I said, thanks for having me. I, I have a question for Dennis. I, I, I've heard some talk about lime and mold, and I seem to hear and read an awful lot about that lately. And one of the questions I have is, is do you think that it's becoming more prevalent, and are there any treatment options? And if so, what are the compounding options for it? Oh, oh boy. that's a great question. That's a that's a three part question. That's a that's a three day question. <laughs> um, wow. So first, so are more the prevalent, prevalent the, right. compounding options? Um, I think it is becoming more prevalent. Um, Why? I, well, first of all, I do know that this year was a banning year for ticks. Why? I don't. Wet. Know. It's very wet. It's, 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 ticks it, it, do not like being dried out. Yeah. I know that's true. And, and of course, you know we have lots of leaf litter around here. It's not like we're in Boston where everybody picks up their leaves. Um, and um, as far as treatments, oh my God, there are as many treatments as there are hairs on my head. Um, it depends upon what the patient, how, first of all, wh how long has the patient had the disease? Right. Uh, is, there, is there any neurological involvement? Mm -hmm. So the first thing they could do mm -hmm. is they could go to Dr. Shoemaker's website. It's called survivingmold.com. S-C-H, oh, survivingmold.com, okay. Right. And, um, but this is not Lyme disease, that's mold. It's, it's mold, but it does deal with Lyme also, in the okay. sense that there is a thing called a visual acuity test. Okay. The visual acuity test, I believe, is about 95% accurate. There's about a 5% margin of error. Uh, and basically, what it is, is a bunch of, it's a bunch of boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with visual acuity? Do you have one I'm we can not. do right now? That I'm sounds not. like fun. I'm only no. familiar with Western blot in terms of, of just identifying... Yeah. You know, Lyme disease. So, so it's survivingmold.com. So. Yeah. Okay. And and basically, it's it's a it's a it's a visual test. There's there's no uh, you can do it online once again. And so basically, it's a series of boxes. And basically, there are very very fine lines. And when you can't see the line, 
they've, they've created this grid, or the, they've figured out an analysis as to tell you whether, how infected you are. So how, this, how this is with Lyme? Well, well, neurological. Neurological uh, effects, effects of inflammation. Right. Okay. Now, it's, that's really kind of interesting in the sense that a lot of times when you get Lyme and mold disease, a lot of people will get foggy thinking. Mm-hmm. And in this, oh, it's affecting my memory. Well, you're, you're right. It is affecting memory because it causes a reduction in the size of various, they call it cotic nuclei in the brain. Mm-hmm. So very n- n- neural centers, mm-hmm. you know, amygdala. So, so you're saying so there's lots of ways to identify Lyme disease. Um, we can't always determine the severity of it, but once you have it, and I want to thank Mike for the call. Thank you, Michael. Mike, we're um, still trying to get the full answer. We're just so, starting. As, so you're saying that, you know, to Michael's point, is there been an uptick in Lyme disease? He because maybe yes. there's, maybe because there's just better identification um, I, I, I pieces could, to that? Like maybe 20 years I, ago, we didn't know it was Lyme ticks. disease or... Or a combination of things. Well, too, no, right? I, th- I think you have a point, but I think you also have a point. I mean, the, the, it is better identified. We are, look, we're sitting here, we're talking about it. Right. It's it's in the public mind. Uh, right. The CDC just came out, and I think they said they figure they're under diagnosing Lyme disease by about three hundred thousand yeah. cases a year, oh. which is a huge yeah. number. That's Absolutely. amazing. So, what would you? What are the drugs? I know there's nasty drugs that you have to take when you when oh, you have yeah. Lyme disease. Well. So the first thing that we try and do, uh, most probably, uh, they're going to do it. They're going to do a deep nose nasal culture, and they're going to find out whether you have a thing called Marcon's. And Marcon's is just another way of saying you have an infection. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but then fortunately, these Marcon's have a way of hiding in your sinuses and preventing them from uh, being eradicated by antibiotics. So everybody's used to taking a pill. Take a pill. You know, theoretically, we're going to get rid of the infection. Not quite the, so simple in this particular case because the infection is not in your body. Everybody thinks the sinuses is in your body. It's not in your body. It's attached to your body. It's attached to the sinuses inside. So antibiotics don't do a good job. That's why we need to use a nasal spray to really treat them. And that's okay. for mold, not for Lyme, that right? Is, that could be for Lyme. That could be for mold. Oh, so, really? So, or, so Lyme attaches to sinuses? It's get, not a systemic? You can get infections in your sinuses, yes. So we have another email from Andrew. Um, we we says, didn't really answer fully. Okay. So we so you were going to talk to us a little bit about some of the medications and the compounding. Oh, uh, well, there's there's lots of medications. So, well, one of the things that we do, I, I want you, I'm, I'm plugging myself. I want That's you to fine. be aware. Go for it. This is the very first time we have actually manufactured something. Uh, this is Hoppington Drug did this. We call this uh, liposomal artemisinin. Uh, we, so, they, Michael, we, we're getting your answer. Liposomal we, artemisium. We use this for uh, yeah, Lyme, Lyme disease. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, a lot of times we will use it with another product we make called liposomal oregano uh, mm. to modulate the uh, the effect on the bacteria because these bacteria are very good at, at, at adjusting. So I just want Mike, Mike, if he could still hear, but we can let him wrap up his call. Just yeah, so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Okay, so thank so you, Mike, li- for calling. Li- liposomal, liposomal, is that on the fatty? Is yes. that fatty? And, okay. Okay. Thank you. Go so, ahead. Go ahead. liposomal artemisium and liposomal oregano. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, we got a whole list of things. Could that you we use this on a salad also? Is that no? Uh, so wondering. you, so you're saying it's a pharmaceutical <laughs> and a non-pharmaceutical approach to doing this, and some of these things you've developed and and have seen efficacy with in your patients that come into the pharmacy, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So would you say that people are more likely to um, stay on these? these non-pharmaceutical things for a bit more, like three months? I mean, the drug protocol for Lyme disease can be extensive. So do people generally have their immune systems compromised, you know, that they need to stay on these? The answer can be yes. Mm -hmm. That's not a definite. And it's very hard to be definite with Lyme disease. But some of the problems that we have discovered with Lyme disease is that they they have a, I'm gonna call it cloaking, they have a way to cloak themselves so that the body cannot identify them as an invader. It's, and Which is why it's not fought off quickly. Well, partly. yes, that's, that's a big problem. And that's why, that's why earlier, before we went on air, I was talking to you about micro, uh, frequency specific and microcurrent, because I was hoping, uh, once I understand a little bit more about it, that there would be a way for us to identify these, um, these, cloaked. The, the, these cloaked infections. Right. 
so mm-hmm. that we can uncloak them and let the medication Perfect. do their job. Andrew um, like has that. an email. That sounds that would be wonderful. Yes. Um, are there a lot of cases of Lyme disease in Hopkinton? Have you seen that increase in that that drug cocktail in prescriptions in your pharmacy? Uh, Over past years or past five, past ten? Well, unfortunately, I'm not in the downstairs pharmacy where those patients would come. I'm really dealing mostly with national issues, Mm -hmm. uh, patients across the country, medical centers across the country. So what's happening in Hopkinton, I'm not really, you got my fingers on the pulse. It'd be interesting if you can get back to us about that. Or we have other callers, if you know, other watchers, if you're watching and you happen to know information about other, you know, how do we have more uh, Lyme disease here? Our phone number to join the conversation is 508-435-7880 or email us live at hcam.tv if you happen to know that information. I think that's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So the CDC would have that information, correct? Let's I call mean, them. I don't know the answer to that. It's re- okay. It's a reportable yeah. disease. And I have two friends in Hopkinton who have Bell's palsy from, actually, and in, in a third also had it and I think didn't, fully get it. So is there a reversible possibility for someone who has Bell's policy from yes. Lyme? There is yes. a reversible possibility. Yes. So how would a person go about figuring out how to do that? Well, I, not, I, probably I, not the same I, in every I, case I, again. I, I got to tell you, I, I did do remember reading the resolve about Bell's palsy, but I do not remember what the resolve is. Okay. So uh, I'm deficient. But it's great to know there is one. There, you know, I mean, for people who are living with that, and if they're interested in addressing I, the situation, it's great to know that there's a possibility yeah. out there. Yes. Hope is a wonderful thing. I'm sorry I don't remember that. That's okay. It's, you know, it's not something a test. I, that's something I do every day. No. We just were, you know, we just are so appreciative that you could join mm-hmm. us because... We know that you are aware of current health trends and, and have this fascinating ability to do compounding and put oregano in something that can cure Lyme disease. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't think of oregano. Yeah. Um, actually, it's a, it's a great antibiotic. It's that's actually amazing extremely to me. effective uh, antibiotic. So when I travel so, abroad, when I have traveled, I always take oregano extract really? as a preventive measure for any no kind idea. of diseases or I take um, any kind of... Yeah, any Oregano. kind of issues, digestive issues that, that I might have while traveling with different food, and um, and it's always worked. Mm. It's it's been incredible. So, so what we've done with the liposomal formulations is we found a way to make the medication anywhere between fifty and seventy five percent more effective. Wow. So, uh, for example, uh, dosing people with doxycycline, I mean, you know. You, they're going to mm-hmm. take the doxycycline, their stomach is going to get, get torn apart, mm-hmm. they're going to be miserable, they're not going to mm-hmm. complete the therapy. We have found a way without using... Um, as much medication to uh, not have that problem. To we give buy, a boost we, to we, the doxycycline. We, we, buy, we bypass the stomach nice. and we increase the effectiveness of it. That's amazing. So, so when you were thinking about what to put together, liposomal being a fatty Right, so the, base. So the, or, the original idea that we got um, from uh, a fellow by the name of Diedrich Klinghardt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Diedrich Klinghardt is in the West Coast uh, he's a uh, holistic uh, practitioner, okay. uh, and he had some formulations uh, talking about liposomalization. Mm. And we liked the ideas, uh, but we found ways to improve them. So, for example, breaking down particle size more, uh, bypassing the stomach, um, putting things in there that are going to encourage the stomach to in, uh to digest or to absorb. That's amazing. Uh, finding out what the lymphatic system is is really going to be looking for, which is basically it's just it's just fats. It's what it wants. Uh, how do we help detoxify patients, but also get the benefit of keeping the the medication in the capsule homogeneous? Uh, so a, uh, a certain form of silica will help absorb aluminum, pre- prevent preventing some of the heavy. So you you're, you're so on the forefront of a lot of of trends and um, new and exciting innovative things to help chronic disease processes that right. would affect the autoimmune system. So we have a, um, a phone call Great. or an email. Th- Is it a phone call? No, email. Oh, it's email. an email. I thought, okay. Um, it says, have you seen an increase over the years of certain issues, lifestyle issues related to, um, to chronic illness? So um, increase in anxiety, increase in digestive disorders. Have you seen that? Well, actually, um, so anxiety, yes, we're seeing anxiety go through the roof, and that has to do with life. It, it, it's, it's politics, it's money, it's, uh, it's where we live, it's whether your kids 
called you to tell you they're going to be late. I mean, there's, there's anxiety yes. everywhere. Uh, <laughs> there's that issue. But that being said, um, we are running into an increase in the amount of people who are having digestion issues. In other words, uh, when they start uh, taking in their foods, they're becoming um, congested. They congested? Uh, malabsorption? So sort of malabsorption? Or an aller congestion. allergic reaction of some kind? Because it, it, it's an inflammation? I can't say that's an information, okay. but, but what we're doing, what we found works, is we're using a combination of a thing called ketotyphin, which is an antihistamine, mm -hmm. with a uh, product called Tranolast. So are these over-the-counter? No, no, these are prescription items. Okay. okay. You, you, this is everything, so the Board of Pharmacy in Massachusetts says everything we touch requires a prescription. I used to have a wonderful line of OTC products. I had a product we called the Alloderm of the Area. It was wonderful for the skin, mm. uh, really took those dry, cracked, cans, especially the oh, construction yeah, the works, yeah. kill them up in a day. It was yeah. wonderful stuff. Can't make it anymore, even hmm. though, even though it's like... So what do you do to stay healthy? Do you do you practice what you preach? What do you, what do, you do? All right, well... You, he uh, walks in the woods and then he has to take all his clothes off when he comes in the door. I heard that part. <laughs> well, I spend a lot of time worrying because that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, did I do this right? Did I do that right? Um, so that's, that would be, so what do you do to, to counteract the effects of worry? Because worry is real. It turns into physiologic effects, right? So right. how do you, as somebody who's on the cutting edge of compounding and pharmaceuticals and non-pharmaceutical so approaches... So heal or heal thyself. To, yeah. What do you do? Um... No, nothing. I just, I just. You look good. Belly up. Well, I, I, that being that. Thank you. That being said, what uh, I have lost about thirty pounds in the last. Wow. I don't know six months. Um, How'd you do that? I stopped eating. It's really At all? Like, well. I, I <laughs> change, change your <laughs> seriously. Change I just, your food intake. Yeah, Very I, smart. I, mean, I just, I like to, I like the nush at night. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't cut out the nush, so I lost the weight. Wow, just like that. Just like that. And I, like that. I know in the past that we that you've had wellness talks. I've been part of those wellness talk series. So um, I know that you really do promote as much as you can in this community a health and wellness style yeah. that that really would benefit everybody for sure. Yeah. So I, I think that I know just from a an autoimmune perspective, yeah. having some of those issues myself, that that I have often turned to alternative measures to help gain some ground in, in a healthier way of life. But it is, you have to practice what you preach, heal by heal. Right, right, heal right. Thyself. So I, I was going to say two things. One, um, as a Reiki master, I meditate and do Reiki on myself twice a day. And I think that's, I think it helps me. I have no idea, I can't really document or test that. But I really think that taking that time helps me because I'm, I'm kind of, I don't really drink coffee. I'm just high metabolism mm -hmm. and go, go, go. But Therefore, I need to take time to just just be calm and, and settle everything. So mm -hmm. I find that very helpful. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say was we heard a very interesting NPR um, thing about something called forest bathing, where a Japanese study um, documented people who went into the woods for an hour and measured vital signs when they came out and then went into the city for an hour and measured vital signs when they came out. And then the recommendation is people should get back into the woods and take that time to just absorb nature and be at peace and calm and without all the hustle bustle, you know, stimulation lights flashing and horns honking. It's kind of a no-brainer, but people don't do it enough. Well, uh, I mentioned Dr. Deidre Klinghart. So yes. basically, Dr. Klinghart uh, talks a lot about, uh, first of all, the blue lights mm -hmm. from our computers and everything oh, yeah. else causing all kinds of problems. Right. He talks about um, basically taking your shoes off and mm -hmm. barefoot walking in the woods to help ground yourself. Right. Uh, and to be honest, to wait, the first time I heard this, it was kind of like, oh, come on. This is like, this, I've is, heard this, that is, before. A, this is a bunch of poo. And, <laughs> and, but I'm hearing it over and over Connecting. and over again. And, you know, it's starting to sink in. Yeah, it is starting to sink in. This Except then great. you really have to check for ticks because yeah, you don't yeah. have any shoes on. So thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. We really appreciate it. We'd it's love fun. to have you back you. again. That'd be great. Thank and you. we'll take a short break and we'll yep. be right back. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Hopkinson Coffee Break. A very special dessert done by a woman from Hockington that yes. I've started using regularly. We had your residents participating both as vendors and as shoppers. Yeah. And that was, oh, that was so, so much so fun. Good. Uh, 
Rubio, Hopkins and Housewives. If you're on Facebook, you will have a blast. Thanks for joining Cheers, us. Cheers, guys. It's been a great. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you see too. You guys. Bye. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. This week on HKM Television. And we're back. Nice to see you all again. Here we are. Uh, and joining us is the fabulous Eric Sonnet. <laughs> Eric has done many things in town. Can you list some of the things you've done? For fabulous us? things in town. Right? Fabulous. Well, I'm not, not just sure the we have time. And <laughs> handsome. And look at this, the great red, white, and blue shirt. And the, I love it. The, um, I guess the thing I'm most proud of is having been a selectman and been chairman of the selectman three times. Awesome. And it was during a time when I remember my first budget, we were $8 million short when we started the process. Wow. And literally had to uh, go to each department manager, fly spec every budget, right. take every penny out that we could. Wow. And uh, we still didn't get it. We got it down to an override of about $3 million bucks, And then that okay. failed at the at the uh, polls. At, uh, town, town meeting? meeting? No, it, it passed the town meeting, but it failed at the uh, oh. ballot. And then we went back within 30 days and uh, got more money out of our rainy day fund. And wow. uh, we fixed it. We got enough money to do the budget. At that point, we were on a roll. We knew we could do it. We knew where the money had to come from, and it was by improving our, our um, infrastructure in town. Mm -hmm. especially water and sewer. Mm -hmm. So we did things like buy Fruit Street uh, complex. We put a mm -hmm. uh, new well in there for water. We did a sewage treatment plant. We did all the things that you would have to do to improve your infrastructure. Once we had that, then we had an opportunity to, one, keep the businesses that were here, and two, attract new business. That's amazing. Yep. Thank you so much for doing that. Well... So we, we were affectionately calling this segment um, WTF, Why is Trump Fabulous? Had to be very careful as I said that. So um, you are a very outspoken Republican in town. You've been on the Republican Town Committee. Uh, what do you feel? How do you feel as a Republican in, in this tell age us of why, Trump? Tell us about why Trump is fabulous. What do you think is fabulous about why? Why should why did people vote for him, and why do people still think he's fabulous? Well, it's an interesting question in Massachusetts. How come? I think we get skewed to a very liberal bias here, and then it becomes easy to pick enemies. Very few people realize that during the primaries, when there were 16 candidates, mm -hmm. Trump's biggest winning margin was in Massachusetts. That's so interesting. Up, in, up until the last mm -hmm. uh, uh, part of the election. I think what makes Trump fabulous is the fact that one, he had a vision, mm -hmm. and two, he knew how to address it. For example, if a person was running for president, he would have to go through a process and say, well, what's wrong? Why do they need me? And when you looked at the United States in that era, we had a $20 trillion uh, debt, foreign debt. 20, 20 trillion. It was more in our gross national product. When? At the, right in now. the election? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I, I remember under Clinton, we had a surplus. 
And no, that was, I that lost was track. An, that was I lost an, track. There's two things. There's a uh, debt mm -hmm. that the country has, and then there's the budget. And the debt is when you don't have enough money and you have to go and borrow it. You can do it through savings bonds. You can do it through... Uh, you, you, basically, you create uh, a lending, and then people buy the bonds. Okay. The, one of the problems we have is China and Japan have bought the majority of the bonds. Ooh. So as a result, you look and you say, geez, I'm $20 trillion in the tub. What am I going to do? And does that mean that we, and I, I really don't know. This is a question I hope you can answer. So do we sort of, are we beholden? to China and Japan because they have loaned us money? Uh, so does that affect our international relations with them? Let me, let me put it this way. If someone loaned you money, would you be indebted to them? Well, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. So our decision-making in terms of China and Japan is sort of affected by that. You well, know, we don't Ch borrow from China, China and Japan did not do it right. because they're great guys. Yep. Although they, they could move. very well be. Right. They did it to protect the market that they do business in, which is the United States. Okay, thank you. So if the United States isn't doing well, then they're not buying their products, Got it. et cetera. Thank you. So they're investing. So it's a, kind of a win-win. Right, they're investing in their own future. Okay. Got it. In Trump's case, he looked at that and said, well, this can't continue because you can't owe more money than you, uh, have, than you spend. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. not possible. So... He looked at that and he said, okay, how am I going to address that? Mm -hmm. He said, well, I have to get more money into this country to start producing things, to start doing things that yes. we can sell internationally. Yes. When he did that, he looked and said, well, okay, where's the money? Mm -hmm. And he looked at U.S. businesses and he found that their foreign operations, because of our tax laws, right. did not allow the money that they made in the other countries to come back into the United States. Yeah. So if you looked at that, there was sort of three or four trillion dollars sitting there mm -hmm. that if the tax laws were different, could come back in to be reinvested in factories and so whatever. Do you think that Trump is doing an effective job on on getting some of that that revenue back and and you know getting it back into our into our economy. Oh, and absolutely, that, was, absolutely. that was my question. Is that happening? So what he set out to do makes sense. And I know he's an amazing businessman in terms of the art of the deal. He's good at making deals. So I know, I see what you're yeah. saying. Did, is it happening yet or it's starting well, to happen? Well, his, his plan is he has to fix the tax laws. Yes, okay. So that's the next phase of uh, what, he's, what he's trying to do. We have the highest business taxes in the world. Yeah. In Massachusetts or just the country? Country. Okay. So we have the highest taxes in the world. We're competing against countries that have literally no business yeah, tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like our, is so Ireland who, someone with no business tax? Ireland, Ireland is a classic example. Right. But if you get right down to it, or Japan or uh, China, mm -hmm. those countries are sitting there where the government is subsidizing the industry. Yeah. And they can dump their product on us anytime they want. There's a big thing going on right now with the steel industry. China's mm -hmm. dumping steel in here. You know, our guys are sitting there saying, oh, what? What should we do? So are there, is, so there, are there steel mines in China? Where well, are the Chinese getting the steel? The Chinese make it. They make it. Okay, so they can. They are, okay. Right. I mean, uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I'm yeah, I was you just know, that's say. Right. I know you're a Pittsburgh boy. <laughs> I don't know boy. about steel. Well, I know I, about steelers, the Pittsburgh well, the, Steelers, the steel, but I don't know about... Well, how, where it's made, I, I, I'm picturing mines and bringing the ore out of the mines and then manufacturing. Well, that's what they do. Okay, so they have that. Yes, okay. they have that capacity. Thank you. I, so, uh, but I, I'm getting off track with the steel. That's just sorry. an example. Yes. We have to fix the tax law. So he's sitting back and he's saying, okay, if I want to fix this country, I have to get the money back. I have to fix the tax laws. I have to do things that will get the country to work. Right. He looked at the trade situations or agreements we have with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. He said, my God, we're, we're getting massacred everywhere because all these things like the North American NAFTA, NAFTA and all those things yeah. are skewed mm -hmm. to the other guy. And then they did an analysis. Since NAFTA was passed and 
China cranked up, we have closed 70,000 production plants in this country. Closed. Because China 70, has closed, more production gone. than we are, we do. The, the industry doesn't exist. Yeah. 70,000 factories. And you were a Ford guy, right? Exactly. In fact, I had the opportunity to talk to Governor Kasich of Ohio. Oh, I love Governor Kasich. Well, Governor... I don't know him personally, but I would have voted for him. Governor Kasich and I are from the same town. He's fabulous. In, in uh, the Pittsburgh area. Yeah. Close in suburb named McKee's Rocks. How's that, guys? Interesting. I love it. <laughs> but the uh, Kasich grew up in McKee's Rocks. His dad was our mailman. That's funny. Small world. And when he came to Massachusetts, I had an opportunity to meet him and spend about a half hour with him wow. just talking about our town. Yeah. But when he found out I was a Ford guy, he said, oh, man, Ford. You have to understand, Ford is an enormous producer in Ohio. In fact, the Ohio's number one between steel and auto. That's what they do there. And he started talking about uh, the chairman of the president of Ford Motor Company, and that was at the time when Ford had announced they were going to move a plant to Mexico. And Trump yeah, got involved yeah, no. and stopped them. You know, when you start, the plant was a 4 or $5 billion investment that was in Ohio that yeah. would move to uh, Mexico. And don't Crazy. get me wrong, the Mexicans... Why they were they going to do that? The well, it's... <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because our, la our labor uh, for building a car is $28 an hour. Mm -hmm. Theirs is $7 an hour. Yeah. I'm no mathematician, but that math but, adds up. But, yeah. but we so, should be paying people what they're worth. You know, that's that's the shame of it is somewhere in this picture, we should be able to pay. $7 an pay. hour in Mexico makes them the top earners. But, but like. then our people are out of work. And that's not okay. No, that's not okay. So, that's why Trump did it. Yeah. We have to keep our people working. We can do it by bringing capital back, investment, but we need the, the uh, uh, tax laws revised. He, but doesn't that, I mean, I think what, I think that sounds great. What I would, what I'm concerned about is I think I heard that the tax law changes would be easier on the businessmen and the higher earners and harder on the lower income or middle. Is that true? That's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know for sure. If someone has a job, yeah. the only jobs that have been created in the last eight years have been part-time jobs at, uh, in, in the service sector. Okay. We're talking about real 40-hour a week jobs with real paychecks, mm -hmm. not manufactured, let's raise the cost of living baloney. I mean, these are things that we grew up with. Man has a job. He can do his family. He can own a home. His kids can yeah, go to American school. Yeah, American dream. Exactly. Yeah. So Trump is putting this together. Yeah. And he said, okay, I have to fix the trade thing. I have to fix the tax thing. I have to fix health care. I have to fix many, many things. But the result of that is America will be great again. You truly believe that? Saying Absolutely. that here right now. Makes sense. So if when anybody else say, feels that America sense. will be great again, please call in because I am a registered Republican and I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. And I know we're a blue state, correct? And no. Trump often gets a bad rap. But well, he um, was saying that we were 16% ahead. Or Trump, the, Massachusetts was 16% ahead for the... Uh, no, I said that during the primaries. Primaries, sorry. Uh, this was his biggest winning margin, margin mm -hmm. I believe, until he... Ran in New York, which was uh, his home state. Mm. But um, what what else do you think he's doing well? So you feel strongly that he is bringing back the trade, bringing back economy, bringing back the American dream. Um, what else do you think he's doing well? Well, we could get into uh, minutiae, but it all comes back to those head topics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make America great again, you don't do it with unemployed people. You don't do it with people who can't make enough money where they have to have two jobs. Mm -hmm. You don't do it in a country where the health care system is so bad that people, regular regular people, have health care insurance bills of 15, 16, 17 grand a year with high deductibles. I, don't know I mean, it's that. insanity. Yeah. That's got to be fixed. So it sounds to me like what he did really well, or does really well, is analyze where the problems are, where the issues are. He identified the problem. He identified the problem, and then he proposed ways 
to address the, the problems that he saw. Is that what you're saying? He's, yes, and he's yes. in process of doing that. Yes. There's other issues. There's immigration issues. There's, right, right. Uh, is he going to build a wall? Yeah, that wall's going <laughs> I don't know. Do you think he's being treated unfairly by either the media or by, in general, well, do you think people treat him unfairly? I don't think our skin or our Republican skin, we're used to getting kicked a little bit. You know, I, I, I walk. <laughs> Wait, which I, one's the donkey? Yeah, right. <laughs> Is that why? I don't know. <laughs> but the elephant wins when he puts his foot down. The, um, mm. Trump does not back down. Right. He has spent his entire life counterpunching. Mm -hmm. Hit him, he'll hit you back immediately twice as hard. Yeah, I heard about that in prep school, I think. Well... If you grew up in McKee's Rocks, you'd know about it. <laughs> the, the Trump syndrome is communicate, and if they attack and they're not fair, give it back to them harder. I did hear that. And that's what he does. Mm -hmm. Does he? Back, did, did you see the thing he was uh, uh, at this G20 uh, thing in Europe? He's sitting there with the president of Mexico, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like you and I are. And a reporter yells out, is, the is Mexico going to pay for that wall? I remember seeing that. And Trump looked the guy right and he said, well, of course Mexico is going to pay for that wall. Next question. He's got the president of Mexico sitting right there. <laughs> well, you know, and I think he does guts. that very well. Yes, yeah. I, think he, I think he presents um, tough guy very well. And I think that shows countries like the Koreas, you know, those countries where they do a lot of that right. showing tough guy thing. Um, I think he's, he's done a very good job of, of talking tough. Um, I just wonder, you know, I think there are some situations where a more compromising tone may help. And I don't know which one. I can't specifically speak to it. But um, I, I hope he can get those things done. We do have a caller on the line. About. Ken is on the line right now. Hi, hey, Ken. Ken. What you got, Hello. Ken? Hi, Ken. I have a question for Eric. It's Why Ken. Why is President Trump having so much trouble reforming health care? Ah. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> and he's my friend. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, friend, Ken. The, he wants uh, you to give a fabulous answer. That's why. Well... I'm not sure at this point there is a fabulous answer because it is such an emotional yeah. uh, situation. Right. You have a Republican Senate and House of Representatives, for that matter, that has two basic uh, thought processes. In the Senate and in the conservative House, you have a group that wants to cut cost, cut monthly premiums. Mm -hmm and uh, literally go back to a situation where the government spends almost nothing on health care. On the other side of it, you have people that come from states that have a very high percentage of the people that need some type of subsidized health care. Right. So when you put them both together, uh, it's sort of like we all like sausage, but if you're watching it made, you never <laughs> eat it again. I know. So. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't really know what's in there, that's, so I'm that's not right. sure. That's yeah. right, and I think that's what's going on. Good point. We have a situation <laughs> now with, in the Senate where uh, they're at loggerheads. Yes. They've decided instead of working it out in the short term, now it's going to get worked out, but instead of working it out this weekend, they've decided to form a circular firing squad and then shoot. Wow. So they're shooting each other. Yes. Yes. You can only do that so long before you say, what am I doing? Right, and where is everybody because they're right. all dead. Now, Trump, or President Trump today, had all the Republican senators to the White House for lunch. Aha, uh -huh. there it is. That's a good idea. Unless the What he not. said to them, I'm not sure any of us will ever know, but I think it was uh, very much like taking them out behind the woodshed. Sure, of course it was. He is not afraid of the issues. Mm -hmm. He will solve them. He's done it his entire life, his entire business life. 
He's gone bankrupt before, though. How, so how did he solve that? That was did, his solution. Did he, I it guess is so. A solution. I guess bankruptcy is a solution to, yeah. well, to not being able to pay your some debtors. Some of his operations within this enormous uh, business world went bankrupt. Trump never went bankrupt. Yeah. So university, some of his components airlines, went. Right. And that happens in every business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's part of, if, if bankruptcy wasn't a business technique, we, it wouldn't be in our legal system. Hmm. And that's the thing. I, I'm going to ponder what, those questions, so that, 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 that sentence right there. And that's what I, uh, my humble opinion, and I'm not fully informed on everything, obviously, but watching what he has done and how he has managed the money that his dad gave him, he looks at tax shelters and bankruptcies as an option. As a, as a you know as a shrewd businessman type of um, approach, another person would say um, that that would be admitting defeat in a way to go bankrupt instead of have it work. It's just a different way of looking at it. But this is a man who has made this a huge success for him, and I think a lot of people looking at his successes in terms of how he managed his business, in terms of the art of the deal, in terms of whatever that TV show was. Um, you know, they are looking at a man who is very good at getting things done, very good at being top dog. So it, it makes sense to try that person as, as running a country. Think about Trump and bankruptcy from this standpoint. You've spread your capital across many, many, many hundreds of different entities. Yeah. They're not all going to be home runs. Yeah. When you have one that's not... Get out, mm -hmm. get out fast, mm -hmm. preserve your assets within the legal system, which bankruptcy allows you to do, mm -hmm. and then reinvest the money in a winner instead of a loser. And that's how he used the, the bankruptcy laws. Right. In fact, it, it's used by almost every business when they make a mistake. Right. Do so. you know what um, Trump's approval rating is right now? Uh, yes. I could look up. It's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I let, don't let, think it's 90%. Let me explain this. Yes. In the case of the approval rating by people like ABC and those guys, mm -hmm. oh, okay. they're very heavily skewed Democratic. The one that just came out had 37, 38% of the people they talked to were Democrats and 25% were Republicans. We have a caller on the line right now. Our 11... Well, let me answer. Okay, let me answer hold the on the phone, answer. caller. The Wall Street Journal, in their most recent survey, went to the counties that Trump won, uh -huh. which is virtually every county in the United States. They only interviewed people in those counties. Hmm. Okay. Trump's approval rating was 50%. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're so, so it somewhere between 38 and 50%. Hi caller, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Do you have a question for Mr. Sonnet or a com a comment? Go ahead. We can hear you. Oop, it's Oh, I can't hear what he's saying. We're having a little bit of a bad connection, caller. Can you call back? Or try it again? Hello? So we'll try and get him back, back on the line. Sorry but about that. No, no, I had a quick question. Um, I, I saw in the newspaper talking about um, Trump Jr. Mm -hmm. And the question about his visiting with the Russian, uh, con some, a group of Russians, and there were some other people from our uh, country not a secret meeting necessarily, but the meeting where he thought that the Russian spy would have some information for him, which I also understand is part of political, you know, trying to get something accomplished. So you... The Russian... The Russian spy, lawyer. Lawyer. She was sorry, a lawyer. I mean, I was <laughs> no, 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 I don't know what you're talking about, but right, I think it's a lawyer. Spy. Right. Okay. So the question is, he didn't have secret service there because he wasn't under secret service protection because he wasn't president yet, I understand, but did he have well, a security Donald clearance? Donald Trump wasn't in that. Exactly. So the son 
did this son have a security clearance? Oh, I think we have is our, my question. I we'll think come our back callers on the line. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Who are we speak? Hi. Hi. Who are we speaking to? Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. How are you? What's your question? Hi. Hi. What is your goal? Hi. You don't understand why so many people hate him. You're like, so, and how old are you, Danny? 11. 11. So what do you like about Trump, Danny? <laughs> well, I think it's, it's hard to hear. Danny, can you hear us? Yes. You know, they always say don't work with kids and, and so animals. So we just wondered, <laughs> give us... I like doing a good job. He's doing a good He's job. He's doing a good job, okay. In what way? What? What is he doing a good job at? Being the president of the United States. Okay. He's running the country very well? Yeah. All right. Do you remember when you were... Thank you for calling, Danny. Well, let me answer his question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Mr. Sonnet's going to talk to you. Just listen for a minute. Danny, the first thing we have to understand is the country doesn't hate President Trump. In fact, he won the election in almost a landslide and won it in places that his opposition should have won handily because he is such a good guy. I'll give you an example. As we know, I come from the Pittsburgh area. My oldest son and his family live there. And during the election, my son called me and he said, Dad, you cannot believe what's going on in Pittsburgh. And I said, what? He said, there are absolutely no Hillary Clinton yard signs, and virtually every yard is painted with Donald Trump yard signs. You would think signs. that's strange, because it's a blue, I think of oh, it's, very it's a, blue. But it's there steel. hasn't been a Republican elected in Pittsburgh in my lifetime. Wow. That's amazing. So the, uh, in following it, now, Trump, now Clinton did carry Pittsburgh just by a little. Mm -hmm. But the Pittsburgh metropolitan area is a six county area. They all are Democrat. But Trump carried five of the six. That's amazing. And he carried Pennsylvania. Yeah. And he carried Michigan. And he, you know, Wisconsin. My God, these places were so anti. Mm -hmm. But the people got it. Yeah. They liked you know, his this, plan. They liked his plan. They knew that he had their back. Mm -hmm. And he would make America great again mm -hmm. or use every ounce of energy at his mm -hmm. command to mm -hmm. do it. Yep. Thank I, you. Thank you, Danny, for calling. So not everybody hates Trump. No. Nope. Thank hates, you, Danny. Especially me. Especially <laughs> you. So I want to thank you. That's why we want you yeah. here. Thank you so much. I know you're a busy guy, and we appreciate you coming on. And, and we'd love to have you back again because I think to, for you to be so passionate about him, it really helps everybody understand who may not know all the good that, that, that he does. Absolutely. So. We do have a couple minutes. Um, so, so the question about um, about the sun and the security clearance. We do need to wrap up. I think just um, we have about three minutes left. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so Trump and the security clearance. Um, I know that Michael Flynn, who also had a meeting with Russians, was actually not allowed to continue his job, but Trump Jr. I'm just wondering how well, these things happen. If look you, at it. Look opinion. at it this way. First yeah. of all, uh, Flynn met with uh, officials of the Russian government. Okay. This kid met with a private lawyer. Okay. Who yeah. ca literally called in and said, "Hey, if you'll meet with me, I've got something that that you might be able to use on Hillary Clinton." Yep. That immediately qualifies it as opposition research. Right. I like how you I heard that. Trump say that. Because it defending. has absolutely nothing to do. Yeah. With government to government or policy True. to policy. Right. Trump's people, I mean, uh, young Trump's yes. people, Banyan and those guys said, this is a scam. Ah. You shouldn't do it. Uh -huh. I didn't he do said, it. well, I told her I would, we're going to meet with her. So they meet with her and she gives them some little something that was meaningless for four or five minutes. Yeah. And then she brought up why she was really there. She wanted to talk about uh, adoption of Russian babies. She just wanted some FaceTime. Oh my exactly. goodness! See, so that makes sense. I did then, not hear that. Then the CNN and all those guys and 
uh, that senator that ran with Hillary Clinton or start talking about this as treason. I, I think mean, this have, is insanity. We have one more caller Yay. on Logan's on the line. Thanks, Logan. Hi, Logan. Hi. How's it going? Good. Good. So what questions do you have for us? Um, I just wanted to say that Trump is doing a great job. He's making America great again. And I'm not very happy about the fake news. Uh, <laughs> well, that makes None sense. of us are None. happy about fake news. That's very good, Good Lord, thinking, Logan. Logan. You know what's interesting is That's seeing... That's a great call, Logan. Thank two you. Two kids call. Two yeah. kids they who... They were both pro-Trump. Both yeah. pro-Trump kids, yeah. so maybe that's the face of the nation now. Is My is, friend Ken Weissman will call to try to trip me up. <laughs> <laughs> he can't trip you up. No. But that is a good question that Ken had about the um, health care. It seems like, you know, Susan Collins and Rand Paul were not on board with the Republicans, and then we lost and then well, two, two other Republicans. Issues. One, you know, Rand. Right. It needs to be worked on. It needs yep. some more tweaking. They all come from a... Uh, I'm right and I'm serious. Susan Collins is the only Republican that voted against repeal of uh, the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. all the seven times they, they passed it. She's the only Republican that voted against repealing it. So she's continued on with what she did. I don't, just, I don't agree with Senator Collins very often, but she was true to Herself. Herself. Yeah, right. Uh, Rand Paul has led the charge to repeal it. Oh. And he voted to repeal it. Yes. So they're coming from what they consider uh, what makes them them. Right. You know, I did this. I still believe it. On they haven't given principle. me any reason not to well, believe it. Yeah. And uh, they cannot hide. Right. Health care is goofed up. Yep. It has mm -hmm. to be fixed. You can call it what you want. You can Agreed. do whatever yep. it is, but mm -hmm. it cannot continue in its current format. Mm -hmm. And it's come down to those guys who got elected and said they could fix it to yep. get their act together and fix it. Period. Right. I think that's a great last statement. Yeah. We do have to <laughs> close there. And we appreciate your time so much. Well, I enjoyed this very much. This You'll have to super. come back. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Thanks, thank you. Eric. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.